I'm in Windows Server 2025 on a domain controller, and let's take a look at how we can share some files and folders. So I'm going to do this a few different ways. I'm going to start by doing the simplest way, which is where you just open up File Explorer, and you click on this PC, and there you can see the C drive. So I'm going to create a new folder, and I'll just call it Share. I'm going to click on Properties, and here you can see the Sharing and the Security tab. These are the two tabs we need to properly share out to users and groups. Now you can choose the simple sharing option. I don't like this myself because of the fact if you have a very large folder that you're trying to share, it's going to cache all the different files and folders in there, and it could take a really long time. I've seen it take more than an hour before. Whereas if you choose the advanced sharing, it doesn't do that. It goes ahead and sets this up in the background instead of slowing you down in the foreground. So I recommend you do this particular way of doing things. So I'll click on Share This Folder. And I have the option to choose the same share name or a different one. And here I can choose how many people can connect to this at any one time. Now that's a lot of different people, so you may decide you want to do less than that, but it really depends on the resources available on your computer. I typically leave it just the way it is because in most cases you're never going to reach that amount. Now I'm going to click on Permissions, and you can see by default it has everyone in there. And you do not want to have everyone in there. First I'm going to choose to add in Domain Users and click Check Names, and click OK. So that's if you want just the users within the domain. You could also go in and choose specific groups or specific users when you click the Add button. The reason you don't want everyone is because that means even guests, people without any type of authentication, are going to be able to have access to this, and that leaves you open to uh, ransomware, where somebody could go in and encrypt all your files. Now I'm going to choose to uh, have full control for all users. And I'll click OK and click OK. Now when I go into security, what I can do is I'll click Edit and I can once again choose Domain Users. And click Check Names and click OK. Now let's say I don't want them to all have full access. That's fine. I can choose to only give them the uh, read access by going ahead and choosing just the read list folder and read and execute, which is the default. If you also want them to be able to write, you can check the write button, and you can also give them special permissions, which is really rarely used, so I'm not going to go over that. Now, what will happen is, is if on the share side, where I went into the share tab and gave domain users full control, and on the security side, where I gave them only read and write, but not modify or full control, what's going to happen is it's going to choose the most restrictive of those two. So I'll choose this option, so they can read and write, but not modify or change other people's permissions. And if you're still not sure who's going to have access to this folder, just click on Advanced and go to what's called Effective Access. Then you choose the user. I'll choose the administrator because I'm logged in as administrator. And click Check Names. Go ahead and choose the administrator. You could also choose by group. And then you select the device. So you would choose their Windows client or whatever it is you're connecting from. I'll just choose the server I'm on just as an example. And then we click View Effective Access, and it tells us what kind of access that user has. And if it shows up, as you see here, with the green check mark, that means that user has all access. So then you'll know which users, which groups uh, will have access to the folders by choosing the different users or groups in that list. And that way you can determine if they have too much access or not enough. And I'll click Close. And now if I were a user on the network, I could click Network, and I could choose to turn on the network discovery and I could browse to that particular shared folder and then there is the share. You could also set up a script to map a drive to a drive letter like the S drive or something like that. I'll show that in a different video but for now this is how you share the folder. Now you can also do this in Server Manager. Again this is Windows Server 2025 and if I want to, I can go to File and Storage Services. Now, the procedure is going to be the same for 2019 as well as 2016. So if you have some older operating systems, you can go ahead and use those as well. And that also includes 2022. So I'll go to Shares, and this has some unique advantages that you don't get by doing this just by right-clicking on the folder. I'm going to start out once again by creating a new folder, and this time I'm going to call it uh, Share. 2, 
So that way we're going to do this with a new folder. So that's in. Now I'm going to go to the Tasks button and I'll choose New Share under Shares in Server Manager. So we get this wizard that comes up and you have the options for SMB as well as NFS. Now NFS has to do with Linux. So if you're trying to share off to a Linux server or client, then you can go ahead and choose this option. But I'm going to guess that the majority of you are not going to be doing that, although the procedure is the same. So if you're going to be doing this with NFS, just go ahead and choose that option instead. But if you're, you're sharing with other Windows clients or even Macintosh, then I assume this, this is what you're going to be doing. So SMB share for applications, that's rarely used. I'm not even going to go over that for this particular video. SMB share advanced requires that you first install file server resource manager, which I'll cover in upcoming videos. So let's choose the quick option instead. It does handle 99% of all different types of shares, and it gives us some options that we don't see in the right click of the folder. So I'm going to choose to type a custom path and just browse to my new folder, which is called Share2. So I'll click Select Folder, and then I'll click Next. But before I do that, you can choose to select by volume. I only have the one volume, which is where my Windows server is installed. So you can't choose that. Otherwise, you'll cause a lot of problems uh, with your server and security issues. So I'm going to choose Next. And I'm going to leave the share name as it is, but I can change it here again if I'd like. Now take a look at the local path. So if I'm locally logged into the server, that's how I get to it. I go to the, the File Explorer folder, and then I click on the C drive, and I'll see Share 2, just like I did. But if you are a remote user, you can get to this by putting in backslash backslash, followed by the name of the server, followed by the name of the share. So once again, you can map this to a drive letter if you'd like, do it through group policy, do it with a local script, whatever it is you like, or the user can just type in this path or browse to it. I'm going to click Next, and here's where the big differences are. So first off, we have Enable Access Based Enumeration, and I definitely recommend that you check that box. And the reason for that is because if a user doesn't have access to this folder, then they won't see it when they try to browse to it. And then they can't come to you asking why it is there's a folder out there that they don't have access to, and then they'll cry to their boss, and then tickets will be opened, and people will be upset. So just check that box. They'll never even know it exists, and then you won't have any problems. Allow Allowing caching of share, what that does is it allows users to download the files and take them off site. I don't recommend this is a good idea unless you have a specific need to do that. And then you have the option to encrypt data access. This is always a good idea. It secures the data against unauthorized access when trans data is being transferred. So it stops man in the middle attacks from being able to get any usable data. So I would uncheck allow caching of share and check the boxes for access based enumeration and encrypting data access. Now, here's where you want to set your permissions. So the permissions were set on the folder, but this is a different set of permissions for that folder. So you can go in, if you'd like, and go to Share, take out everyone once again, and then add in domain users or whoever it is that you want to share this folder with. So you can, I prefer do it using groups rather than individual users. It makes it easier when that person leaves the organization. So I'll choose Full Control once again. And then the permissions tab is the same as the security tab when you right clicked on the folder. So that's why you see some of the same stuff here. So once again, I'm going to go with domain users, but I'm not going to give them full access. I'll just give them what you see here plus right access, just as I did on the other shared folder. Now I'm going to click OK, click Next, and click Create. It has created the folder share, so it's now set up as share two. So if I go back to my original location, I'm just going to put in the UNC path, which stands for Universal Naming Convention, and just type in localhost for the name of the server, or you could type in the actual name of the server, but in this case, it's a really long name. Now we see our original share folder, but I also see share two. So I can double click and there's my share. So there's a couple of different ways that you can create file shares. Now there's one last way I'm going to show you, although there are more than that, you could do PowerShell and command line as well. I'm going to show you through computer management. So this is an older version, an older program, but it works perfectly fine. So you can go into the shared folders and there's your shares. And once again, we can create a new share. So I'll click next. I'll choose the folder path. I'm going to choose 
the C drive, and here I can choose to make a new folder here, or I can go back into File Explorer either way. And I'll call this Share 3. So I'm going to select Share 3, click OK, click Next, and once again, I can choose the Share Path. It also gives me the option for offline settings if I choose to make that change, I certainly can. And you can see the permissions look a little different than they did in the other uh, options. So in this case, you can see all users have read-only access. Administrator has full, but other users have read-only. So these aren't quite as granular as some of the other options. But you can choose custom, and there you see the familiar share options and security options. Once again, I recommend you taking, taking every one out and just going ahead and putting in domain users. But just for demonstration purposes, I'll just go ahead and finish. And now we have Share 3. A quick refresh, and Share 3 shows up here as well as here. So there are three different ways to share folders and files within Windows Server 2025, and it does work on older versions as well. In upcoming videos, I'll have additional ones using PowerShell as well as Command Prompt.